Well, good morning from Suburban Jessup. It's uh, January 12th and it's snowing pretty good out. We've got about, I don't know, two and a half inches of snow so far. Uh, so I figured I just might as well stay inside and do a couple videos. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go back to, well, kind of the basics uh, with the first video. We're going to make a going to make a, just a regular leaf uh, like this one here and then uh, we're going to uh, after that we're going to make a video on how to do a folded leaf uh, I'm going to make them both from, from 3 8 square stock uh, which is what I normally use uh, so that's what we're going to do today like I said we're going to start out with uh, 3 8 square and we're going to put, oh, I don't know, uh, when I first started making these, I put about as short as a taper as I could on them. But I think now I, I probably put a good half inch taper on them. Uh, so we're going to start out by putting a taper on the bar. A plenty of taper. Now notice when I do that, I'm not on the on the anvil face, I'm up. Okay? I don't know what would that be, about a 22? 20, 22 degree angle, not really sure. But when I come up, I I work right at the end. That way, I'm not hitting the anvil. You can see that I'm not hitting the anvil like that. I'm on the end here, and I'm driving like this, and that way I don't hit the anvil while I'm trying to put the point on. So we have our. That's all I want for a taper, like I said. Maybe there might be an inch there, probably more close to three quarters inch of a taper. And that's all I want. Put that back in, heat it back up. Now on the next heat, I'm going to come over and I'm going to come about, probably about the same length, three quarters of an inch to an inch back from where my taper starts and I'm going to hit half on the anvil, half off at that 20, 20 degree angle or so creating a step. And I'm going to turn it 90 degrees you'll notice when I turn it, I turn it 90 degrees with my wrist and I'm going to hit it again creating another step but I'm going to work it back and forth and what we're doing there is, is we're isolating the mass for the leaf and then starting the uh, stem of the leaf too. So I come over like I said, about three quarters of an inch to an inch. I turn it 90 degrees. Back. Now as I work it back and forth, I make sure that I've got that step locked in. Okay? That's what we have right there. And as I turn that, you can see that step. We've got our uh, mass isolated. So what we want to do now, we're going to heat it back up and we're going to bring it out and on the diamond, just like that, not, not laying on the flat, but on the diamond, we're going to drive that down and that you've already started your spread with your diamond so it helps you spread that leaf out. That's what we're going to do now. Anytime you're forging, especially mild steel, you want it a good orange heat, uh, if not going toward yellow. If you're just 
towards you the red heat, you're wasting energy, you're wasting time. Now we're going to drive, put it on the diamond, and we're going to drive straight down. Now with driving straight down, this is what we have right here. Let's look at it from the end. We don't want to go too thin, but there's what we have. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to take and if you're not used to using a rounded hammer, it's, it's probably better to use a cross pin. But we're going to take and we're going to pull these sides out. Okay, so I'm going to switch from the, from the uh, rounding hammer to a cross pin, uh, just so you can see how we do it. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to come at it and we're going to hit here, okay, on the other, and we're going to pull it towards us. And then on this side, we're going to hit it here and push away from us to spread that. That's what we're going to do. So now we come out, and that's how we're going to pull the sides out. what we have there. Like I said, what, what we're doing is we're hitting here and we're pulling it this way and then we're hitting there and we're pushing it that way. If that makes any sense to you. Let's go. Now depending on the style of leaf that you're making, what you want to do, uh, sometimes you want to leave a ridge right down the center, which is what we're going to do this time. Uh, we're going to take and we're going to use the face of the hammer now and we're going to take the hammer marks out and we're going to leave a ridge down the center. I'm not sure how well that ridge is going to show up, but there's a ridge right down the center of that leaf. I think you can see it there pretty good. So, we have our basic leaf shape. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a chisel and we're going to Vein that. My veining chisel, you see it there, is canoe shaped. It's not real sharp, but it's not rounded either. But it has that canoe shape so I can walk it down that crease as I go. I don't want to pick it up out of the crease. I want to hit it, walk it forward, hit it, walk it forward, hit it, walk it forward, hit it, walk it forward. If I raise it up out of the groove, I take a good chance of it hopping out of the groove and then having a miss hit and, and, and it, it's not a continuous vein. Most of the time, 
When I'm using a chisel, or doing punch and chisel work, I use a ball peen hammer, I don't use my forging hammer. Now if I'm using a rounding hammer, I'll use the round face uh, on punches and chisels. So we come up here, we start in the center, we start on, in the center on, 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 the inst on the back side of the wheel, we start forward. We're aiming for the tip of that leaf. Now, we got that. We want to come up. Be careful not to dig your handle here. If you got a cut plate, it might be a good idea to use a cut plate. You don't have to hit real hard. There's our range. Not really sure how good you can see that, but there's our range. Leaves in nature aren't flat. And right now this one's flat. So what we're going to do with this now is we're going to take that and we're going to uh, we're going to give it some life what we're going to do. We're going to put that back in the fire. So if you can see this, I'm, I'm pretty, this, this is just a regular 2 before 4 block. Is all that is. It's a regular 2 before 4 block. And this is what I normally dish these leaves in, okay? Uh, after you do 2 or 3, it'll leave a nice, a nice depression here. Uh, this is a fairly new one. I couldn't find the one I've used before, uh, so I burned it in here a little bit. But as you dish those out, it'll get a nice, uh, a nice, uh, a nice dish shape to it. That's what it'll do. So, we're going to turn it this way so you can see what I'm doing. I normally just put it to short weighing device. Now normally I have this this way in the vise so the jaws can grab better, but I usually have it sitting on the on the screw box, uh, but so that we got a better angle with the camera here, uh, I put it sideways. Now you want to bring that over, and with the veins that you just put on facing down. right into that stump and dish it out. And then I like to come over here to the end and just give that a little bit of a turn down. Now, let's wire brush that. And there's your leaf. You can see it good enough. Let's get a side shot here. Just get a little bit of life to it now. Now what we want to do next is we want to draw out the stem. That's what we're going to do. I guess I should have had my hammer out. Huh? So we're going to do this on the horn.
Can you use that one more time? You can also use the edge of the anvil to fold that down with a little quicker. Just like that. You'd be amazed how much quicker it goes. Don't go too thin. Now we're going to take all the dimples that we created. We'll keep them square. We always fold the material down. Get all the material down and square. That way you can keep track of the paper. If you're trying to do a ramp, you're going to have a hard time keeping track of the paper. Normally I went ahead and I started doing that. I started doing that going around with it. But since I'm showing you how we do this, we do that, like I said, we do that that uh, the tapering down, that falling down, we do that on the square. That way we can keep track of it. We have straight sides to keep track of things and make sure everything's even. So now we're just going to take that and we're going to, we're going to round that up. So we're just going to take that and we're going to knock the corners off of it. Try to stay off the leaf when you do that. And then just go around. going up to that leaf, you'll break that if you let it get cold. So don't let it get cold. Okay, so now, you don't want that to get cold because it'll break on it. So you're going to that up. You're going to come back a little bit further. There it is. There's the stem. Now you can take that and you can cut that off and then you can taper that stem and you can make it into a curly cue for a keychain. Uh, you can a good demo for me in the public is to make about three of these and then I, and I leave the stem fairly long and I try to cut them where one is one 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 uh, stem is longer than the other two uh, and then I take them and I bundle them together and I forge weld them together to make a group of three leaves. Uh, leaves go quick, people enjoy that demo and then like I said if you go straight from that to welding them together it goes fairly quick and, and, and they get to see you forge weld something together. So that makes a good demonstration. So I hope you've enjoyed today's uh, video uh, like I said, uh, this makes a good demo in public. Uh, lots of pieces use different kind of leaves. Uh, the main thing that affects the body of your leaf, and we'll get into that into the next in the, in the next video on folded leaves, but is is the length that you leave that full and the length of your of your taper when you start. The longer lengths you have, the longer your leaves going to get. I have people ask me, why do my leaves end up so long and skinny? Well. You know, the longer you got your leaf, your 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 bud, what I call the bud, what we call the bud, 
uh, the longer your leaf's going to be. The shorter you have that main section where you haven't uh, tapered from your taper back to your, to your stem, the shorter that is, the, the shorter and, and wider your leaf's going to be. And a lot of people like that look. So, and then, like I said, uh, a lot of people take and they take a brass brush. I, I've done it on a lot of them and you brass brush them. Uh, gives them a nice brass coat. Uh, so just a nice ornamental piece, a very basic piece. So I just thought I'd do a video on how I do it. So this is your, your, your basic leaf. Uh, <clears throat> I make them out of uh, 3 eighths, half inch. I've made them out of 3 quarter. Uh, for the basic leaf, 3 eighths is a good size to start with. Uh, when you get to the, to, the, to the folded leaf in the next video that we're, we're going to do uh, later on today, uh, I like making them out of 3 eighths and half. Half is probably a little easier because it holds heat longer. But for the basic leaf, I like 3 eighths. It's not too heavy to work with and uh, it works well for me. So, thanks for watching the video. I appreciate it. If you like it, uh, please like it and share it with your friends. And uh, we'll get together next time in uh, Suburban Jessup and hopefully it's not snowing so much. You take it easy and be safe. Thanks.